Hello and welcome to the Mobius Development Podcast, a real-time development log of a senior game development project. I'm Casey. I'm Amanda. And I'm Alex. And this is the beginning of the second half of the Vertical Slice conversation that we had. Um, not much to really dig into here, so we're going to just jump right back into the conversation. I think that we shall. Yes, so um, I want to just start off by saying that this playtest was better organized by mm-hmm. the games department than the demo playtest. Uh, like, this time the tables, when you, we got there, were where they needed to be, and they had mm-hmm. numbers on them, which was a huge help, because yeah. last time it was up to, we up were to fed. the public. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, this time we were, we were fed. fed. This time, yeah. uh, there was pizza, and uh, pizza. We w- we had pizza tickets to give mm-hmm. to our playtesters, uh, members of the public, so that they could participate in the pizza. Um, just overall, it was it was smoother run. It was also shorter. Uh, mm-hmm. Last time it ran from like three to eight. This time it ran from five to eight, partially. So we were still there from three to eight. Yeah, but we were, we were also there until I, almost I, yeah, nine. I have, that's but, true. We were. I mean, some of us were there from two to nine. Okay. So in terms of preparing it was <laughs> yeah what, those was of us 2 p.m. Were, the previous day yeah <laughs> th- th- those of us those of us that when we thought about the next sprint went before the playtest they went i'm not quite sure what i want to do i'm a little bummed that there's not stuff to do that then saw the huge to-do list and we're like yes mm-hmm. more things yes we we're the ones that were there at two o'clock the, who were like to-do list. who very much enjoy going oh i like having stuff to do it's true yeah, it's and not true. just stuff to do but like actionable results based on real data that we got yeah. from yes. instructors so this is very, very good long stuff to, to do. do list but it makes me very happy we may put an image in the show notes to be determined yeah I, we, we probably will <laughs> definitely on the youtube version of the podcast mm-hmm. you'll just throw in it in the up. description yeah mm-hmm. yeah because i think that's an well, what if you just like put it to... in the video <laughs> asking a lot of me right now i am <laughs> asking a lot of you i apologize i won't do that I will, again <laughs> i will consider it mm-hmm. okay that's but consideration it's a slippery slope towards it no longer being a podcast <laughs> that's true yes like, that's I, very I true. like video editing and i will go crazy okay maybe i shouldn't progress maybe I, on the game maybe okay maybe i shouldn't like maybe i shouldn't enable this habit yeah, do not encourage me okay i will, I will not encourage you i think that's a, that's a fine point to make but uh, but uh let's in um, terms of hours all i wanted to say was three hours Hours of playtesting is plenty. Oh man, mm-hmm. it's, yeah. it's it's you get a lot of, of good stuff out yeah, of it. Yeah, it's kind mm-hmm. of uh, exhausting. Yeah, uh, to be there inter- interfacing with people for three hours. But and, I think you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I was glad that they reduced the time of the playtest yes, for that. Absolutely. Yeah. I think the core thing we learned too is that I brought it up earlier, but is that we had sequestered ourselves for so long and weren't digitally playtesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the big the big sprint retrospective thing that goes in the schedule because we have our big google calendar master schedule is digital play testing must be in that schedule at mm-hmm. some point every single week yeah i yeah. think maybe um near the end of every week like when we do our weekly recaps it's it sh- would be good to be mm-hmm. like what did we accomplish this yeah. week it, ne- it also know? it yeah. needs to be play tested also yeah. i think that that corresponds well with something that paula brought up which mm-hmm. was that we should have for the people that don't tend to see the build should have more experience with like what does this what look does like our game right actually look like yeah, like we what is our off, game at the beginning of jam time we should just we should play through yeah. the existing build. i feel like it wouldn't be hard at the beginning of jam time yeah, to we, find two people yeah. that don't know anything about the puzzle <laughs> and how it's implemented yeah. and then have them or play just it. just yeah. to just to see it go through and go all right we as the programmers who've stared at this thing for many hours and just go and we can play through the whole game in 30 mm-hmm. seconds because we know all the answers and just blip through it and go okay here this is this is the what the space looks like. This is how it feels. This is how the environment sounds because that's a lot on our list. Is that sound design was not graded on this one, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so we, in terms of man hours, I did not focus on generating very many new sounds. Mm-hmm. That is probably what most of my spring breaks going to be is mm-hmm. generating yeah. a bunch of sounds. So we do have a nice sound infrastructure in terms of the code and how yes. we play sounds now yes. which is better than what we were doing before yes and um, it's very easy to put new sounds in but i think um in terms of really discussing the play tests, we should get into there are four um key play tests that i think we really want to break down mm-hmm. uh, in detail and that is the nathan play test the robin play test the tad play test and the Max and Evie playtest. Yeah, and all of those people, why we're naming them specifically is because those are, um, three of them are our instructors and two of them are our TAs. Yes, yes. so their feedback is very, uh, not only well 
versed. Like they have yeah, a lot of they experience. They know they know how to areas. tell you what yeah. what's going on. But it's also very relevant to our lives because these are the people who will be giving us uh, probably grades at some point. It's yeah. True. Uh, or at yeah. least in conversation with the people who are giving us grades. Yeah. With the exception of Nathan, who's just a cool dude with a lot of good yeah. knowledge Nathan, to, Nathan to give a, us. Well, I mean, he's he's also a professor, but he is also. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's not our instructor yes. at the moment. Nathan, if you listen to this episode. As Ox said, you're a cool dude. <laughs> um, Me, Nathan, so. and Kelly were wearing matching pant colors. Yeah, I, 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 I saw that that was pointed out, and Nathan was like, nah, don't bring that up. <laughs> Technically, I was wearing overalls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. But um, I think of, 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 of the four, the feedback that resonated with me the most, I think, came from Nathan. Mm-hmm. So I think let's, let's dive into the, the Nathan feedback and really break that down. Yes. So as we mentioned before, Nathan is um, picking on our typography and spelling and all of that, which is important polish details, uh, things that were sort of left by the wayside in, in, uh, in, in favor of making the vertical work. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but it was, it was good to be reminded that that stuff is just as important as everything else, especially when it comes to a big turn-in like this. Um, I, I mean, I didn't feel um, that it was detrimental to the vertical experience, but I do think, you know, polish. Yes, it's good. I think that's a <laughs> typ- typography is a very polish phase thing. Mm-hmm. It's a, as many people say, it's a 172 task. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so I that think was a more minor point. Getting into really good typesetting is going to be important, but uh, yeah. it wasn't uh, a high priority now, but I think it very much will be mm-hmm. moving forward. Uh, we have a Nathan, a couple of Nathan quotes from the vending machine, such as "This vending machine is a fucking mess." <laughs> <And> <laughs> to, to be fair, well, he said that immediately. That yeah. wasn't like yeah. that's not as a result of the gameplay. That's no, a that that's is... his immediate reaction upon seeing a vending machine that is, at its core, a fucking mess. No, it yeah, was, no, because that actually. Man, I'm gonna have to put the ex- in my the explicit check mark on this you episode. You guys were swearing earlier. We were swearing earlier. It's true. Well, um, that was in what may be its own episode. Mm-hmm. So, it's true. Mm. yeah, now they both are explicit. Now they're. Oh. I mean, the last the two YouTube have been versions. It's YouTube. It's yeah. got to be. Well, to be fair, since episode two, I've put the explicit check on because I've sworn in both of those. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you know, our yeah. introductory still there. podcast can get you into it in a clean fashion. Yes. We didn't yes. swear in that one, but no, we've we sworn not. in all the ones since. <laughs> yeah. You didn't opt to bleep them out, so I just clicked no, the explicit. No, I didn't. Part. I didn't end up bleeping them out. I thought about it, and I was like. Nah, nah, we're we're big kids. Yeah, I'm a big kid now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was his knee jerk reaction to the vending machine. We had some interesting knee jerk reactions to the vending machine. Yeah. What was uh-huh. what was the? Did you have a, you had said you had another guy, Nathan quote? Uh, we do have another Nathan quote. I was gonna say the first guy that looked at the vending machine was like, I hate these kind of puzzles. Yeah, just yeah. immediately like, I <laughs> yeah. hate these kind of puzzles. Well, I'm like, I I don't think there's anything we can do to improve that. No, for no. You. I'm, what I said um, <laughs> to uh, Paula, who was a little bit worried about that, um, was like you don't know what game you're gonna play and you sit down and it's a slidey puzzle like if you're expecting an action game or an rpg or like literally anything other than a sliding puzzle yeah, you're going to you're be, gonna like, be like oh. it reminds me of like whenever i'm like replaying like pokemon heart gold and i walk into the ruins of alf and i'm like mm-hmm. oh right there are these silhouette puzzles mm-hmm. and because this is a pokemon game the implementation of them is mm-hmm. not very good yeah so i'm like ugh there's a TM back here, and I want it, so I have to do it, but I'm going to do it begrudgingly. Mm-hmm. Did you want the other Nathan quotes yes, that I've Yes, I do down? want the other okay, Nathan quotes. So They're quite for, good. For context of the vending machine, it's a scrambled-up vending machine. There's some patterns that you need to place in certain places, depending on where your partners are. So when he figured that out, you know, the, the big question for the person he was playing the game with is, where is your cookies? Where, where are your, is cook- your cookies? Oh, right. Where is I your cookies? Still have I forgot no that idea it was... how people think interpret that as cookies, but it happens Every a lot. Time. I interpret it as cookie. It looks like a cookie. I'll See, tell you. It's oh. like fifty percent of people think it's cookies, and the other fifty percent of people have cannot see it as cookies at all and i think that caused friction yeah. for a couple i of I, appre- <laughs> I appreciate that the immediate response from from tad's daughter was dragon fruit uh-huh. because, and then tad was like so the one that looks like a chocolate chip cookie see and then and then she was like it doesn't look like sure. one <laughs> the funny thing is that um scrap is all the all the pattern scraps are drawn from like my big box of like paper scraps mm-hmm. um and that one was specifically from an einstein's bagels bag so it is a, a section of a bagel <laughs> <laughs> so it's none of those things nathan should have said things. where is your bagels no where is, where your, is your cookies uh and then the other good nathan quote about the puzzle is i'm gonna get my business in order with my puzzle pieces first um 
so that was uh, not not as explicit as yeah. the first quote. But no, I the first one was good, and the discussion of the man at the bus stop that just gives you facts. Yeah, is how the communication <laughs> felt, and I think that rings true a little bit. That it's just like, hey, did you know this like obscure <laughs> science fact? I also liked, hey Nathan, can you show me what's in your journal? And Nathan is. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. I, just the way, because just because he's such a casual dude, mm-hmm. and like you can, he he's he played the role of someone who wasn't buying into the thing, mm-hmm. and you could tell that he was playing that role because just mm-hmm. kind of the way he delivered stuff, and that he was having trouble keeping a straight face when he said <laughs> when he like accused the other player of lying, and mm-hmm. it's like no, that's not true. You're lying to me, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, this is why. I desperately try to take every class you teach at this university because this is so much fun. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was an interesting playtest um, for the vending machine puzzle, partially because he was playing with one of our teammates who, mm-hmm. who knew the puzzle, at least knew the um, basics of the puzzle, mm-hmm. if not the mm-hmm. exact solution of the yeah. puzzle. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think for our teammate, it was a bit of a balancing act of like, how much do I tell you yeah. uh, versus how much do I like try to let you figure out on your own? And it's not a puzzle you're supposed to figure out on your own. It's a puzzle yeah. you're supposed to figure out with a teammate. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that uh, impacted the playtest a little bit, uh, just because there was this this um, sort of space of unknowing of like how much do we give away, how much do we not yeah. give away, when the goal is to like give nothing away. But that doesn't work when exactly. it's a two-player yes. game and you need but, um, a second player. I think that so. the, the, the core of the feedback was unrelated to the communication. Yes. It was related entirely to this the existence of this vending machine puzzle and its fundamental mechanics are incongruent. Mm -hmm. So when you look at a vending machine, your immediate response is not, I have, Oh, this vending machine is a fucking mess. I have to Mm -hmm. flip these things around. That's not the immediate instinct. And we noticed that across play tests is that the vending machine as it exists right now, Mm -hmm doesn't make a lot of sense in the way that it is presented yeah, to the I player. I think that the skin of a vending machine doesn't make sense, but I'm happy, like, a positive thing is that it reads without touching it as a slidey puzzle. Yes. Right? Like, you see it and your immediate your immediate response is, oh, I need to fix this. Yes. Um, and that, I think, is positive, but why would you be doing this to a vending machine? That yes. is less uh, obvious. Even I think the addition of the visual effects we talked about mm-hmm. don't improve the why of vending machine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think when we go back to like everything that Marcelo told us about the whys, mm-hmm. I think that like in in my opinion, I would argue that the fundamental response to that is let us take this puzzle and put it in a different skin and let mm-hmm. us use these vending machine assets with very slight modifications and do a different puzzle that, in my opinion, Alex, you and I talked about this Mm -hmm. a a decent amount last night, that is as simple and easy to solve as it possibly can be, Mm -hmm. but that does a very good job of laying out the communicative aspect. Yeah, because we need our first puzzle to not have anything that you can do without communicating. It needs to force player one says a few give information to player two, player two, give information to player one. Yeah. This is the fundamental mechanic of this our is, game. This is now the, you know yeah, what it is. This is the core mechanic. There is no networking. And just just something that is very overt that it is what you must do. That's why I said mm-hmm. it was like, one player looks at the vending machine, they've got a number scratched on it, mm-hmm. they try to put it in on their own, they go, oh, I can't. Does it work on yours? They put it in, they get a thing, that's got a code on it, put mm-hmm. it in, that's got a code on it. Both those codes then give you the solution to the puzzle, the mm-hmm. thing that you were aiming to get. That is not that's not difficult. That from my per, from my perspective is not additionally difficult to implement because we already have that code infrastructure from a different puzzle. Mm-hmm. And it would require f- like four additional assets. It would require yeah, scrawling difficult. a number onto yeah. the vending machine, mm-hmm. a zoom in of the keypad, and then some snack bags which yeah. we technically already have designed we just need to blow up a little bit yeah, yeah. definitely and I do not think, hard to, to do yeah. from an art perspective yeah and i do think that um what you said about having combining the newton prism with the current implementation of the vending machine makes sense because there is a clear what am i doing with rearranging prisms on a table yes. whereas there is not a clear what am i doing with rearranging the pieces of a vending machine yes i think that's a very 
a thing that we can lean to. And then obviously that the, that one, as it's in a later loop, is going to be more weird. Mm -hmm. But I think that Nathan was right that even if it is weird, congruence with what's going on is still important. Because mm -hmm. yeah. like the vending machine is weird and screwy. But mm -hmm. it should be weird and screwy in a way that still makes sense that it's a vending machine. Yeah, because yeah, I think what the, what I got out of that um, was that we weren't using, we weren't taking advantage of player intuitions. Yes. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And we need that as a puzzle game in order to make things read well. Yes, yes. absolutely. I think also that like um, it, it leans into something I think that Marcelo had said a while ago and in that just like, Damn it, I forgot what I was... No! <laughs> I lost it. I might, it might come back to me, but I lost it. Um, Marcella has said a lot of things, yeah, so... Yeah, a lot of very, <laughs> very, very good feedback very related useful things, things, so I've, I've lost it. But, um... Uh, but yeah, but that's that's a really big takeaway from from Nathan, is uh, keeping the world consistent. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and, and taking advantage of those player intuitions. Um, and I think a, a sort of secondary takeaway is we don't have a tutorial in the vertical because it wasn't being graded right now. Um, and I think that uh, a vending machine that yeah. is really simple and conveys the core mechanic of communication uh, would be a really effective tutorial, and then yeah. that would help the players a lot figuring out the density puzzle. Yeah, and uh, it also so. doesn't that that particular puzzle doesn't it doesn't feel like a tutorial. It just feels like an easy puzzle. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think in terms of implementation, I I really am in favor that that's what we replace the vending machine with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's it's super simple. It's mm -hmm. super. It very much, it very cleanly represents the core mechanics of the game. Mm -hmm. yeah. And unlike all the other ones we have, there are, it's, it is a puzzle that from start to finish has multiple points within it wherein the players are presented with positive feedback for communicating with each other. Yes. Yeah. That is a thing that is missing from a lot of the puzzles right oh, now, yeah. mm -hmm. is that there is not, there is not, like, they're not, until they completely solve the puzzle, there mm -hmm. is no point within it that they are receiving feedback that their act the actions that they're performing by yeah. communicating with each other are the actions they're supposed to be taking mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's something that i was um conveying to uh kelly and ariana from the puzzle team is that when designing future puzzles you need to make sure that your puzzle design has that flow of you can always see what the goal is and as you're going you can tell that you're getting closer to that goal yes um mm -hmm. with, and i think that there should be very clear feedback points that are a lot of the puzzles are very good at providing negative feedback in that you have done something incorrectly but they don't have points internally as you go from the start to the end to say your the actions you are taking are the correct actions because i noticed again in the vending machine puzzle um when you swap the rest of them to be right there is a lot of resistance to moving them again to see the thing underneath it and i think that is also like that's also a big no-no mm -hmm. So I think that if we retool the way that puzzle works to focus on light and the Newton prisms and we implement this very simple, air quotes, tutorial for the vending machine, that's the best way to very clearly act on that feedback in a way that solves a lot of underlying issues that we notice during the playtest. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Agreed. So this is, you know, the preview of that big to-do list. Uh, yes. If you, a listener, uh, would like to take a look at that picture, these are some of the things that are, you know, concretely solidified, uh, yeah, like... the actionable responses yes. to the feedback that we got. Yeah, and it's 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 very nice to have those uh, actionable responses to feedback. Absolutely. And I think if there's nothing else we want to touch on with the Nathan playtest, I suppose we should move on to the Robin playtest. Play yeah, test. so Robin is one of our art games professors. Um, mm -hmm. We haven't had a lot of contact with her um, this quarter, especially because we've been working closely with Marcelo. Yeah, there's um, sort of this idea that you pick one art professor and one tech professor that are your touchstones into the faculty Just because world. there are too many teams for there's a lot every teams. professor to touchstone with everyone. Um, but I believe so. because uh, Michael was not available for this playtest, we got um, we got Robin instead. I, I is, don't think that was actually the case. I think, think it was. It, no, it said, in, it the said in the email that they very explicitly made it so that a professor that has mm -hmm. not had experience with your game would be the one that playtested it. Interesting, mm -hmm. interesting. Today. And I think that's a good way to go because I think we want to get fresh eyes on the game as yeah. much as possible. Um, so yeah, so Robin played with uh, one of our peers, another student, uh, who hadn't played the game before, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and uh, I think there was a, a lot of, the, the main takeaway, um, hmm, well, 
there was a lot of confusion uh, mm-hmm. in that playtest, and there was a lot of critique of uh, smaller, like, quote-unquote smaller details, like how collision works in our game, and, um, you know, whether that feels good as a mechanic uh, or functions well. Um, like, when you're picking up the bottles in the cylinder, um, you know, does it feel good for them to tilt this much? Does it feel good for it to get bigger when you pick it up? Does it feel good that uh, you can only pour it at the top of the cylinder and you can't mm-hmm. drag it to the middle of the cylinder? Which was across multiple playtests. People yeah. were confused when they couldn't drag it to the middle of the cylinder. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, there was a lot of uh, 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 that kind of feedback from yeah, Robin. From- from what I heard, because I wasn't present at this playtest, I was playing a couple other games. It was it was more pointed feedback than some of the other ones that we got, because Nathan had said, "How harsh do you want me to be?" But he almost always diffuses any like pointed feedback with humor. Yeah. So it doesn't it doesn't like hit to the core as much. But from what I heard, this a lot of the feedback was more pointed, and not to necessarily say that that's a bad way to deliver feedback. That's just the way that some people. Some people really respond well to that. It's a different style, yeah. And it's, I think the thing that I said that we could really take away from a lot of Robin's feedback was processing feedback that is much more pointed in Mm -hmm. how it is uh, delivered to you. Mm -hmm. Instead of just going, they're ripping it apart, I'm going to shut down and disregard it because it's not delivered to me in a way, or to me in the most, in the way that I would be ideally accepting of it Mm -hmm. yeah and i think that we could even do a case the case study of you got a lot more out of the nathan one and i got a lot more out of the robin one than the Mm -hmm. nathan one i think that's just because i respond better to things like this collision is terrible you're using the point in the middle of this object to do the whole object of this thing don't do that you should be using this instead and i'm like good that's a good point i think Um, that's fair that's also very actionable i think something that can be hard with like nathan's style of feedback is you don't always know what the root cause is Mm -hmm. um i think in our case in our feedback from nathan we understood the root causes really well i think that's part of why i like the nathan feedback is it gives me something to chew on a little bit it's Mm -hmm. not immediately this problem it's like oh i'm gonna think about this feedback that you've given me for a little bit and come up with an actionable solution and as someone who enjoys chewing on feedback like that a little Mm -hmm. bit it's it's a lot more interesting to go. You're not just telling me what you would do. You're telling me this is the problem that I see. I leave it up to you to identify and solve it. Mm-hmm. And I really like that because it, it doesn't it doesn't inject what you want the experience to be mm-hmm. into it. It says this is the experience that I had. This is the thing that I did maybe didn't like as much about it. Mm-hmm. You kind of you you take the torch from there. Yeah, I think another thing about receiving feedback even very pointed feedback is there's always the possibility even with our instructors that the feedback that they're giving us is wrong and or they've fundamentally misunderstood what they were doing and they're saying like oh this is how you implemented this and here's how you should implement this but they're not right about how we implemented it and it's like yeah i think that's fair and that feedback is still useful but it does require that step of like taking a step back and saying what is it that they were experiencing that caused them to say there's an issue here or to interpret it as that way yeah um so even the most pointed feedback i think does have that sort of you can you can think about it and think like how do what like without doing exactly what the play tester said to do which i think is often the terrible decision yeah, no, if you listening just... <laughs> directly as as someone who has experienced many a um many a uh, public warcraft beta Doing exactly what the players say (laughs) tends to not do well. Mm -hmm. No. I think one concrete example of what Alex is saying is so much feedback is about you need networking. And so much of our response is we're intentionally not doing networking. We're we're not doing it. And um, some people respond well to that and go, oh, that's kind of, that's a cool design challenge. That's mm -hmm. interesting. And then some people are like, that's dumb. You should just have networking. Yeah, yeah. I, I like, don't remember no. if Robin talked about networking with us at all. I don't think she did based on my memory or my notes. Um, mm. I don't have a recollection of it. You weren't no, there. Please. Well, I was there for a little bit. <laughs> my my recollection is, did someone mention it 
to me mm-hmm. at a different point, mm-hmm. not it, it did, did I hear up, it. It did come up yesterday. I just don't think it came up with yeah. Robin. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, but, like, Alex is saying, you know, not all feedback is feedback that you want to take. Like, part of the feedback process is making those decisions as an individual yeah. or as a team about yeah. what feedback is relevant yeah. to your game and your vision. Yeah. And I, like, think, I think all feedback is valuable, but mm-hmm. it's, like, it's not always about what the person who's giving the feedback thinks it's about. Yeah, yeah. for I sure. I think... And that's why I think wrong feedback is super valuable because mm-hmm. then you can go like, why, what, what things did I do in the course of creating this thing that caused them to interpret it incorrectly? Yeah, mm-hmm. how, and how, how can I fix that? Why are they making these assumptions? What about the game encourages them to think in that way? Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So next we had uh, our professor Tad and uh, our professor, a professor a who professor. we've had before. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, another. Tad. <laughs> and I'll have in one as uh, right? uh, another point. So. Another he so. yes he will be teaching in the spring. Another mm-hmm. cool dude. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. Uh, and also a dude that I I knew who he was and I walked up to him and talked to him once and then walked away and realized I hadn't introduced myself. Yeah. <laughs> like oh, oh I just walked up to him like I know him because yeah. I know who he is but he doesn't know who yeah, I am. That's rough. <laughs> I I had a I had a whole a whole a whole course with him last quarter where I met with him every week mm-hmm. and I have a great plethora of like. 45 to 50 minute long discussions with him mm-hmm. that weren't even about the project we were working on. We very, the the team, the, the two of us that talked to him very quickly kind of covered things around. He's like, you're in a good place. And then we just, the 170s, general development, Netflix and <laughs> Disney Plus shows, The Mandalorian was coming out at the time. We talked about that. And mm-hmm. it was just like the experience that Tad has in the AAA realm, the chance to just get to talk about that and how it worked is super interesting because mm-hmm. this is a, this is this is a guy who has worked at very well named companies, mm-hmm. Blizzard and Riot. Mm-hmm. So having access to someone like that for feedback is real good. Yeah, I think also very the cool. feedback on that test was better because Kelly helped me to um, accept the limitations of our build mm-hmm. and to think about what the meta information was that i needed to be providing for the players before they started yeah um so i was able to tell them this is a game about communication there is no networking i have these hints that kelly has written for me if you need help yeah I, mm-hmm. they will eventually be disseminated eventually within the be build in the but game, we have not done not that yet. yet um and those things i think helped a lot with mm-hmm. both the tad and the um ev and max uh yeah Playtests. Mm-hmm. The, the the Tad one was a very fun playtest because it was, I believe, the longest of the playtests that we had. Mm-hmm. But um, it was one of it was one of those where I at, there were points where it felt like they kept on going because it was a sunk cost, and there were points where I felt like they kept on going just because it was at that point where it was so aggravating this little thing that they were misinterpreting. But it, at the same time, it still felt like the relationship between the two. Mm-hmm. It, they were having fun in a weird way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that's another thing about what makes it so hard to play test puzzle games because um, a lot of puzzle games, you spend the actual act of solving the puzzles in a state of frustration. That <laughs> yeah. As an outside observer, your temptation is, oh no, my game is broken. They're like, look how, like, if they're like grinding their teeth, like, what is going on? But it's yeah. like, that's kind of what we want. Like, yeah. A little it's bit. It's very funny. Mm-hmm. I think. I think we we leaned too far Uh in that particular playtest, but there were elements where I'm like, this is exactly how I feel when Mm -hmm. I'm solving a tricky puzzle in a game, and that's really, really good. Mm -hmm. And whenever I ask people after the playtest, like, did you find those puzzles engaging, their response was yes. Like, they felt motivated to solve solve those puzzles, and I think that was a success, even if the puzzles themselves need to be redesigned a bit. Yeah, I can make... I'll, I'll say because I'll probably lose it again. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Es- especially if we if we act on making sure that puzzle congruence exists, so mm-hmm. that kind of the, the act of solving the puzzle makes a little bit more sense, mm-hmm. and if we start implementing additional feedback points, because the great thing about a lot of puzzles, like if you look at like a dungeon in Legend of Zelda, one room is a single puzzle, but there are there are there are actionable actions that you take. You hear the success jingle in a room more than once yeah. before mm-hmm. you get to the end. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really important that you there is some level of success as you go. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I was going to make a um, only partially related observation, so uh, which was that Sad played with his daughter, so there was a pre-existing relationship yeah. here, a communication relationship, mm-hmm. and like when Evie and Max played, like you know they know each other, they're friends outside of work as far as I can tell, um, and uh, when we had a couple of strangers that were both interested in the game and play tested, it seemed like there was a lot less communication because there mm-hmm. wasn't a pre-existing, yeah. even like I know who you are and you know who, know who I am kind of relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's another sort of, uh, this makes it just a teeny bit harder to play test because it's hard to pull in random strangers, two random strangers to play test yeah. a game about communication. Yeah. Yeah. And two random strangers isn't our target demographic. Exactly. You know? Our target yeah. demographic is two people who are friends mm-hmm. yeah, who've opted who to play this game have opted together. to play it together. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think... I think that, yeah, because Tad and his daughter had the longest play test and they stuck through it, uh, but they were having fun engaging with each other because it's like, they're, you know, yeah. they have a relationship, they know each other, it's like, this is a communication game, mm-hmm. so I think yeah. that was an aspect of it, for sure. Yeah, and I think the, the the very core elements that we got from that one are these signage hints are more effective than they were, but they can be more effective. Like, they, they can be, I think... We, we saw, like, have redundant hints, so two hints that indicate the same thing. You don't need them both to solve it, but it's nice to maybe have another one. Mm-hmm. And then um, uh, I, I'm i unsure as to the clarity of, like, that, but I think I also learned, like, if you don't think about the concept of density all the time, mm-hmm. more and less sometimes slips between does less mean it sits on top or does less mean that it sinks into it? Yeah. And that was a, a thing that we noticed uh, mm. happened to Tad yeah. a lot. It's happened to other people, but I think it was most prevalent with Tad where Tad mm. would read a line and then go back to the piece of paper. He was also one of the only people that had his own paper that he was yeah. writing on, which is something I, originally I thought would happen more, um, but Tad, I thought th- I think, was the first person to actually do it. Yeah. Um, but he had a piece of paper he was writing down the things. He would read the hint that um, specifically that syrup is less dense than honey. He would look at his list and he would say, and with it would have it in the wrong order, and he would say, yes, this agrees <laughs> yeah. with this hint. Yes. Um, and I think that was just, like, it's very easy if it's just that one word and that you have to connect it to that idea of uh, density and what that would mean mm-hmm. about floating. Like, it was just a little bit too much to where we need to be more specific. Yeah about what that means. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's why I, I think later today I'm going to take a crack at rewriting those things. I was going to do yeah. it last night, and then I got home, and I wrote some show notes. I'm like, I should go to bed. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> so, I had a similar experience last night. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but I think um, I lost it again. <laughs> Crap. Um, I think uh, expanding some of those those hints and um, I think a lot of it is I have said on multiple occasions when talking about how we should present the hints the way that I think would be ideal to present them and I realize now maybe I should just make one and say this is what I've meant the whole time I think Mm -hmm. an example would be really useful I think that in creating um, those posters uh, we were the art the narrative and the puzzle team all attempting to work together and there was a bit of roadblocks. There was a delay in getting the specific hints that we needed. There was a um, lack of, there, like, a lot of the art people were already assigned to things. So I yeah. pulled in two puzzle people. I said, you know the hints. Can you please make some of the posters? Yeah. Um, and then the one art person we had on a poster, uh, you know, had some stuff come up, yep. didn't finish uh, in time. So we had uh, half artwork, half, like, programmer art on yeah. that poster. So it was very much, um, I think... The posters specifically were a product of running out of time, Uh, and um, I think that in retrospect, it would have been good to prioritize them more. Yeah, Um, I think that's something. But I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty. So. It always is. (laughs) Um, But I think that um, because I was always saying like phrase, create them as though they are an exhibit description. Yeah. Not a a a a a Bill Nye. Uh, transition that tell or like a good eats transition that tells you a fun fact. Yeah, it needs to be more diegetic, like, more in the world. Yeah, they mm-hmm. don't like. Yes, they feel diegetic, but it feel it feels so arbitrary mm-hmm. to just have like Nathan said, some guy at a bus telling you a thing. <laughs> I was always thinking of it like, okay, there's an ex- there's an exhibition. Like everyone wanted to click on Paula's exhibits too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think 
that's where we put the posters as opposed to putting them on the wall is make yeah. them make them like the the little exhibit placard that sits next to the the glass case mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. says the thing yeah yeah this is something that i was a little bit worried about from the beginning with designing environments but i didn't do a good job of communicating it of if you try to fill out the space with things that look cool people are going to interpret that as these things are interactable and they're not yes and Mm -hmm. it i think like even just having the whale it's like a thing that looks cool if it doesn't do anything we have to hide something in that whale Mm -hmm. i think something has to be there feels like it's broken and not like it's added content Mm -hmm. the other thing about uh having things in the environment is we tried to make things that were interactable like pink and orange Mm -hmm. and uh it just wasn't clear enough Uh, yeah throughout play tests we observed that wasn't a clear enough observation originally we had um lines black line work on interactable objects that we Mm -hmm. then removed before the vertical slice because feedback from uh the art team in general and also from marcello is it wasn't really reading um, but in hindsight, I think we should have kept it for the vertical and tried that out. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe we'll you know try it out the, again in the future, but who knows? Yeah. I, I think have that the idea of having interactable objects be a different color works, but it wasn't true in our vertical slice because yeah. there, there was the couple. monitor, the newspaper, mm-hmm. and the whale were just the same as the rest yeah. of the environment. I think mm-hmm. I have a I have a question about the monitor. And knows, does the monitor uh, glow when it's not being interacted with, like when it's just in the regular background? Because I noticed a lot of people initially miss it. Oh, mm-hmm. it was covered by the inventory because the mm-hmm. inventory has a bug yeah. where it had to be open and a lot of people didn't know they could close it. Yeah. Okay. So the bug is that it opens automatically on start and nobody sees the X to close it. Okay, all right. Yeah, <laughs> that was consistent across play tests. Right. People I wasn't sure if it glowed or the, not. Uh-huh. Had the inventory open the hundred percent of the play test and missed yeah. things that yeah. uh, okay all right that's that's a different thing yeah. so I was gonna yeah. say if it doesn't glow it should probably glow I, I think, think something that glowing would be cool isn't currently on the um, itinerary but I think would be a good thing to have is um, in part as part of our technical in- intro in explanation of our UI so like this is the inventory you can open and close it this is the yep. journal you can open and close it these two buttons are for looking left and right this button is for going back. And it's I think that would be very helpful like, as Nathan well. Because, like, Nathan missed the whole concept of looking to the left and to the right. Yeah. Um, so I feel like we need something to be, like, this is yeah. the UI and this is what the buttons do. Yeah. I think that would be important. I think a lot of it just comes down to, I think, at this point for quality playtesting where we don't have to directly intervene, we need to have a very clear, solidly made technical intro. Mm-hmm. And I think the way that TikTok, the, the game, not the meme app, does... <laughs> does their technical intro is very fluid and very like it doesn't feel like you're giving me a big list of things that i have to do to continue onward Mm -hmm. so i think basing it off of that and its delivery style is probably the way to go Mm -hmm. yeah also tad uh an interesting thing about the tad play test is that they finished it and they both got to the um the putting the statue piece on back onto the statue and the screaming so it yeah. was uh, no that the, was very that nice. feeling of victory <laughs> was was so palpable when they pulled yeah. it off I and was it was so shared happy. i feel amongst everyone watching the play test of yeah. like somebody beat the game this is great yeah no ev- <laughs> people were so yeah, they were so excited also again i think i said this but i'm gonna say it again the mobius piece in the density tube cannot be the one that looks like it's part of the whale mm-hmm. because then people are like oh i'll put it on the whale and i'll get mm-hmm. a thing However, an element of why is we could make the thing in the density puzzle a whale bone. You do put that whale bone back, the whale's mouth opens, and the piece comes out of that. Mm -hmm. We could do that so that the whale does something. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Again, just thought of it, maybe throwing it out there, maybe that's something we do. had the idea of hiding symbols on the whale that would be relevant to something. Um, I like that as well. So, yeah, like if you can zoom in further and find symbols on the bones. I like that as well, like etched into the bones. Yeah, I think we have a couple of um, ways we could go with the whale. Um, You know, for a temporary solution, I think Alex even suggested just making it shake when you click it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that shows that your click has been received by the computer. Yeah, so like a short term, I think that's great. For a longer term, I like your idea. Yeah, and I like Yalin's idea. So yeah, I think, I, think cool I like the idea of like do. the scratched runes into it because mm-hmm. we've we've had that discussion of that one overarching puzzle, mm-hmm. and that doesn't necessarily mean that the overarching puzzle has to contain elements from all the other puzzles, but it has to contain elements that you found while clicking around. 
Now, the problem with that is obviously because you can't go back to that bale yeah, after a certain just point well, whale, if we just, hide anything easy, there. You, you, if it's runes, you just put them in the journal after you see them. Well, but no, we can't guarantee means, that they've seen it. Because uh, yeah, if, if it's not locked behind a puzzle, we can't guarantee that well, they've seen it. Well, this is more of a getting in the weeds question, but do we intend to have the same... Like, will the whale still be there in other loops, or will it be totally completely... If it is there, it won't have the same runes. interactability yeah. mm. to it. Okay. Well, that will be a discussion we dig yes. into later. Yes. For now, um, let's get to that last feel, play test. Yeah, do we feel ready? Yeah. yeah. So the last one we want to discuss are our TAs play tested Evie and Max, and uh, they had fun. They had fun with it, which is yeah. always like a really great uh, thing to see. One thing uh, that they said specifically is that they ha- liked that the like s- hints were kind of silly and straightforward because then they mm-hmm. could be silly about yeah. them the- and. Uh, yeah, no, like joke around together. Yeah, Evie said something like that. That that first hint can go fuck itself, <laughs> because it's that it's the Professor Layton style of hint where the first hint is always something you've already figured out, and you're like, why? You... Yeah, I think no. if your tone is joking, you're gonna get a better response from people because you're gonna be given the benefit of the doubt, di- the benefit of the doubt that the premise is not meant to be taken super amazingly seriously. Yeah. Um, so I think that having that tone in our posters and in our um, des- general design, I think, helped us out in terms of how it was received. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, they also mentioned that the uh, vending machine, though they enjoyed it, needs more "quote unquote" tutorializing. Yeah. Um, so either it becomes more of a tutorial, or there's more of a tutorial lead to it. I'm not sure which they meant. Um, I think probably either. I think it was we we picked the one. I think mm-hmm. also if that's brought into something where it's more congruous with the space, yeah, it will be tutorialized by the player's intuition as well, which mm-hmm. I think would be very helpful. I definitely agree. Um, they also talked about uh, we talked about this with other playtesters as well, but adding like a like a pending uh, or unseen notification kind of element to the journal button uh, to let you know, uh, hey, you know, there's something you haven't looked at in here. Um, we, we talked about that with several people. Uh, and they also talked about the idea of three frame sparkle animations as opposed to trying to, you know, force particle systems to do what we want in yeah. the canvas. Because I, I love how, like, we, we thought about doing it and then someone said particles and Evie was very quickly like, no, don't do it. Just use a GIF. Yeah. Just uh, don't do it. Which I think will be uh, something that the um, art team can get on as well. Because I think that, uh, I mean, I for one, as, and I think a couple other people would be interested in trying our hand at very simple animations yeah i think um, even I think that could be fun even like just a like a a little uh, an effect just a trailing effect that happens when you click mm-hmm. anywhere that yeah. just like shows that we are actively responding to your click but there is nothing here mm-hmm. yeah that, that would probably be really useful um i think that's the bulk of my notes uh for evie and mask oh uh there was confusion about whether or not the flask uh, that was empty and labeled H2O was empty. Yeah. Uh, this yeah. was a cross play test, but with Evie and Max, I think Max said, uh, I have water, and Evie said, No, that's an empty. <laughs> yeah, I think that was said so, in the other. I think Tad yeah. had that from too. He's like, No, it's yeah. just wa- the water. No, I think Nathan said, The water's here. It's just clear. Mm-hmm. There's only like, one yeah. clear solution to this, and that is bringing back milk. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we can. Um, it shouldn't be an easy fix because we have a temp asset for the water bottle, anyways. Mm-hmm. So if we want to change the liquid you get from the vending machine puzzle, like that yeah. won't be too well, we hard. Could just, we could just change it to mm-hmm. another water-like liquid. Just, yeah. Just make it a product-placed soda beverage. Yeah. yeah. And I'll I'm reach sure out to Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I'm sure that there's ways to make the empty bottle look more empty as well. Yeah, I agree. Without I mean, redesigning the asset. I say reach out to Dr. Pepper only because the currently recorded sound I have of a, of a bottle of beverage falling out of a vending machine is a dr pepper <laughs> so good to know it can be very meta in that regard mm-hmm. but yeah but i think those are the the main feedback points from evie and max um and i think the biggest takeaway for me from that one is we have a big check mark that says engaging check mark mm-hmm. uh, yes that they were really engaged with it they had fun they enjoyed it um they enjoyed working together and um you know it's it's not perfect yet, but if we're if we're making an experience that people are enjoying, like I am really happy about that. Yeah, that's 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 always the thing that like keeps going. It's like oh, I'm, yeah, obviously it's still in work and there are things that are weird, but it's still it in its current form is an engaging experience, mm-hmm. and that's really good. So I think after breaking down that feedback, we have a little bit of time left that we can break down the super to do list of the here's everything that we want to try and get done. Bef- I hopefully before the end of the quarter. Yeah. I don't know how realistic that is, 
it looks super long, but when you break those tasks up among ten people, mm-hmm. it obviously is less long. I think long, a better so. phrasing is rather than we're going to accomplish all of these things before the end of the quarter, we're not going to try to accomplish anything outside of these things. That's better, yes. During this sprint. I think this is the <laughs> last better, yeah. the last things. Um, just for a little context of how we came up with this post-vertical to-do list, as I titled it in my notebook, um, is after we finished our last playtest, uh, we gathered up all of the team members who were present at the playtest, whether they had been uh, watching all the playtests or only watching some of the playtests. Uh, we gathered together, we spent, I mean, I wanted it to be a really quick 10-minute meeting, but it turned into, like, a 40-minute discussion. Yeah. Um, and and basically, uh, everyone was just throwing out, I want to fix the touch input crash bug, I want to add ambient noise, I want, you know, so, so we have this long list of things that were, like, um, we want to add the slight perspective on the density tower asset. It's lots of small things, uh, things that we picked up from uh, the playtests as a whole, things that were specific playtest feedback, things that we thought of, um, just to get everyone's brains together and have this big long list of, of things to get done. Uh, honestly, most of the things on the list are pretty quick. Um, like, um, okay, and also not quick, but there are things that I've been meaning to do for a really long time, like the art reference document. Um, but, uh, but yeah, a lot of the things are quick. Like, fix the columns on the newspaper asset. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I messed them up. I can fix them. It won't be yeah. take me very long. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's a lot of things on this list that I think are very quick fixes, but also very high-impact fixes yes. in terms of how the game flows. Like the animation speed frame rate issue. Yeah, yeah. that will be... Because that fixes every animation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every animation game is fixed when we fix that frame rate problem. Uh-huh. Yeah. So. So, yeah, so there, there's there's some things that are really quick fixes uh, that are high impact. There are some things that are slightly longer fixes, uh, like um, redesigning the vending machine puzzle. Like, it will be yeah. pretty fast, but it won't take no time either. Yeah. Um, uh, having the water bottle or other goal visible in the vending machine puzzle so that you can, like, see it. Like, you know, that might just be a matter of where we place the asset. Mm-hmm. Um you know changing our collision that's probably just a matter of changing hit boxes as far as i'm aware is that true <laughs> i think our collision system needs to be completely rewritten okay. but yeah Maybe that might be a then. longer <laughs> fix but uh, i think it's not like an incredibly long fix but i think no. we need to readapt uh, yeah. the way our collisions work yeah mm-hmm. and i think if you tie that into the reproduction of the journal Mm-hmm. That might solve the other journal bug of making of being able to check if there are overlapping things when stuff spawns in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so we've got a lot on this list, um, but I'm really uh, I'm really thinking it will be a uh, a good final closeout of the quarter because yeah. you know if we accomplish you know even just you know the the highest impact of the things on this list the highest impact items like yeah. we'll be There'll really be happy with changes. where especially the especially if at. we like really just cap it off before we're all off in, in all sorts of different directions during spring break we cap it mm-hmm. off with that last play test get that last instructor that we like that hasn't played it yet mm-hmm. to play it would do would do wonders mm-hmm. and i think um the only one other i have a couple other big things that i put on here to want to cover is do we want to at all discuss like ways that we can like keep some momentum going in the two weeks off for finals week and spring break where there is no sprint we will not all be in the same place some of us will be um completely inaccessible in a game setting for a while i will be probably in vegas for a few days Mm -hmm. but if i get a text for the game i will probably drop my uh my current blackjack hand and answer (laughs) it so what i said about that um at the birthday meeting about approximately two weeks ago from right now um, was that there will be work done during those two weeks but it's entirely on a volunteer basis yeah. and it will be entirely things kind of like the things that are on this list refining the things that we've already established and yes. not creating new things because nobody wants the situation of everybody disperses and there's two people who are still working on it and they've got like, oh I've got all this free time I'm just to work on it and then we yeah. get back and it's nobody it feels like it's their game anymore. Yeah, so it has to be that. limited to things that are refinements, um, which I think is good for us because like, I'll still be working on it. You'll probably have a little bit of working on it. Yeah. And then maybe Paula, and then that's the entire tech team. <laughs> the entire so tech, any, team so is tech, tech refinements, I yeah. think we won't have as much of an issue with it. But in terms of art 
stuff, narrative stuff, I think it might be harder to do those yeah, things without I think, um, having the team there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My, my other point was maybe not momentum during, but also how, how best do we want to make sure that we hit the ground running in 172? We don't have mm-hmm. what we had at the beginning of this quarter where everything was slow to start and pick up. We will all know what our class schedules are mm-hmm. before that, I think. At the end of spring break, before that first week, we should get everyone together and say, all right, everyone put your schedules into this when to me. Let's schedule the narrative meeting. When is it? Schedule the art meetings. When are they? When's the tech meeting? When's our jam time? When are all these things? Mm-hmm. Right away. That's so that yeah. we, and we, and like, mm-hmm. they start that first week. Mm-hmm. So like, if we say jam time is on Mondays, that's the first thing, and no one has class on, I don't have class on Monday till four. So that could be the very first thing I do back before I go to any classes is there's this four hours of jam time. Yeah. I like having it in the evenings, so maybe we put it in an evening again. It's very convenient that 172 classes are at the same time again, mm-hmm. and the only difference is that section is now on Thursday instead of Tuesday, mm-hmm. which very well could just mean that our jam time is now on Thursday instead of Tuesday, and then everything else remains somewhat the same. But I think that's all kind of up in the air still but i'm Mm. it is a concern of mine that we will we will get into some like getting back into it limbo and i want to try and mitigate that yeah as much as possible the idea of scheduling uh before the quarter starts is going to be a huge help to getting uh getting going first week because um definitely one of the things that slowed us down was scheduling issues like Mm. you're like you're telling us uh like you're like you're telling everyone on this podcast yes yeah Uh, i think also (laughs) at the in terms of the beginning of this quarter there were issues with uh we had to do onboarding for mm-hmm. new people and we had to meet each other and like be like hello yes what are our roles what are we doing but yeah. i think so i think a lot of the friction from the beginning of this quarter won't be there starting the next quarter yes there is some um, there is still one thing that is very very up in the air and it's in regards to will one of our artists be here mm-hmm. or abroad <laughs> yes. and that is entirely down to the uh, the coronavirus and the if 19. it prevents her from traveling to Japan. It's true. It's true. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I guess we'll get an update on that when yeah. we get an update on that. Yeah. I yeah, don't know. I think that will also be part of um, what was mentioned in the previous episode, which is the big 172 reshuffle of, of mm-hmm. roles, mm-hmm. which I think will be it will slow us down a little bit, but I think it'll, it'll be important, and in the end, it will produce better work. Mm-hmm. And I do think people, um, some people will be more motivated after having a break than yes, yes just i believe so careening as well. on yeah. yeah some of us are weird like us and we're like i'm a the grind never stops and <laughs> like i was i was one where i was like i saw the big to-do list and i was like fuck yeah <laughs> stuff i am the grind never stops but also i want the grind to stop for yeah. a week <laughs> I, yeah i i would i'd be okay with a week where the grind stops but i feel like because my i only i have one presentation at the very beginning of finals week and then I basically have two weeks of spring break. I feel like by the end of that first week, I'm going to want to get back on and yeah. start doing more stuff again. Two weeks, two weeks is very, very much longer than one week. So, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but I think we've got good plans going forward. I'm feeling really positive and excited about, like, where this game is going, what we already have so far. And I'm, yeah, I'm just feeling pretty good overall. Yeah, I think we're, we should be, um, my very last, uh, uh, point on the on that show notes list is holy shit it's so cool <laughs> we we're, we're we're making a thing it's not super falling apart people like it mm-hmm. and i'm like oh apparently i did it i earned an hour toward my stand goal while i was sitting down <laughs> so uh good job casey take that physical fitness <laughs> um i think though we're in a we're in a good spot to um end this off here so yeah. um This has been the Mobius Development Podcast. I'm Casey. I'm Amanda. And I'm Alex. And thank you for listening. Bye.